That's quite big. Impressive. All right, everybody, welcome back. So today I figured we'd cover a vehicle which has actually been requested quite a few times, the F3H, and specifically the AIM-7C, which is the premier radar missile this thing gets. And uh, by the way, as we up front, would not recommend using it. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it should be good, because, I mean, you look at the stack car, it's a 15G missile, and 9.3, that sounds pretty good, right? Well, the problem is it comes with quite a few caveats, so... This is not the first version of the Sparrow that was ever developed. Uh, it is the third. The AIM-7A, also known as the Sparrow-1, was a beam riding missile similar to the Fire Flash that you find in the Swift. We don't have that in the game, of course, but this is the first Sparrow that we get in the game. So it is a semi-active radar homing missile. It does have a CW Seeker head, which has some advantages. So unlike something like the R3R, the AIM-9C, if this isn't a head-on, it's not gonna be fooled by chaff. That's pretty much where the advantages end. So, like I said earlier, it's supposedly 15 Gs. The problem is it has to be going fast enough to be able to do that. And it has an absolutely terrible motor that only burns for 2.04 seconds and barely gives it any thrust in the first place. Then you also have the fact that the entire time it is burning, it cannot turn. <laughs> it is not able to turn until at least two seconds. And even then, for another half a second after that, it can't even pull 6 Gs. Now, once it passes 2.5 seconds, it can pull 6 Gs and it slowly ramps the way, all the way up to 15 Gs. The problem is you actually have to be going fast enough for you know it to be able to actually hit that speed. And in most cases, it's not going to be able to do that. Now, what this does mean is that in the very small window that you have, like I fire this at 3 kilometers, for example, it's still going straight by the time he's almost past it. There's no way it's going to hit. Then you also have the issue of, well, if you fire too far away, it's not going to hit at all. Now, this thing is all right for hitting people flying in a straight line. The thing is, right, it's about to hit him. He's only 1.4 kilometers away. I could have just shot him here in like another second with my guns. It's really, there's no practical purpose to it. It's not good at the point blank head-ons like the R3R. It doesn't have any range whatsoever, really. The only times you get kills with it are people that are flying in a straight line, like this A4 right here. He's almost stalled himself out with bombs, and even then, you know, it barely reaches him. <laughs> if you see right here, there's like a six kilometer side aspect shot. And if he had actually just turned a little bit at the end, I'm like 95% sure it would have missed. So, it's not the best. And honestly, I just recommend running four AIM 9Bs in this plane, because you can see I'm going to fire this in an A4 that's going incredibly slow after just turning, and he just pulls up a little bit and it misses. 15 Gs, folks. By the way, if you're interested in the Sparrows and the development and how each one progresses, Jake made a great video. I'm going to leave that link down in the description. I would highly recommend checking it out because he covers all the stuff in a bit more detail than I'm planning on doing here. Now, the F3H itself, I mean, the platform's okay. It's got some pretty nice low-speed handling. You can see right here I'm easily pulling inside this MiG-17. It doesn't have the best thrust-to-weight ratio, but it has massive wings with a ton of lift, and those slats at the front when you pop your combat flaps really, really help. It's also relatively okay on speed. It can ex exceed the speed of sound in a, in a dive, but in most matches, you're not gonna be doing that. It's gonna be subsonic in almost every case. This does hold you back a little bit, 9.3, because you're gonna be fighting a lot of stuff like SU-7s, MiG-21s. I mean, I mean, when I have mixed games, you're gonna be having F-104s in the enemy teams, and uh, there's no way you're gonna reach that. And unfortunately, your missiles can't really make up for that either. The AIM-9B has limited range, I'm sure y'all are all aware, and even the AIM-7C has really abysmal range. Uh, I've had it miss when I fire from less than two kilometers. Now, here's a case of someone that just basically flies in a straight line. He makes a slight left turn, and it does actually manage to connect. And the nice thing there is that even if he had chaffed, because he was still coming straight towards me, as long as I maintain lock on that chaff, it still would have connected. Now, here's another case where I try to fire it at, like, you know, close distance, and it, he just flies in a straight line, it doesn't even attempt to pull in. It was probably still going, like, straight, maybe pulling, like, three Gs by the time he passed it. There was really no chance of being able to get it right there. But I do get to show off this performance by slotting behind this F-40 Sabre, and I've already gone ahead and crit him. You can see this thing loves to pull AOA. It loves to, to pull in behind people and just sit there. It does not like to keep its energy when it does that. It's going to be bleeding a ton of speed whenever you do it. Unfortunately, my kill does get stolen here, but this does give me a chance to go ahead and show off that low speed handling again. Especially since I'm about to pop my combat flaps here in a second, and you see those slats coming out in the front. You can pull inside pretty much everyone when you have these out. Like, you'll, you'll even be able to easily dogfight most of the lower tier jets. It's actually pretty fun. 
just how good this thing is in a dogfight. Unfortunately, most of the time, if you do that, you're going to get hit by an AMNL or something, but, you know, for when you need it, it doesn't matter. I do manage to take off that lightning swing tip, and he's going to be going down to the ground, and that's another thing I want to talk about. These guns feel really good. So for those of y'all who didn't know, Gaijin actually went ahead and made some adjustments to Real Shatter, I think it was like a week or two ago now. Uh, they adjusted everything from 15 to 27 millimeter, I believe, uh, somewhere around there. And the Colts feel so much better after the changes. Uh, they're still not quite what they used to be. Uh, you still are going to be getting some Real Shatter moments. You saw me getting some on the F-40 Saber right there. But for the most part, if you hit somebody now, it'll actually do pretty reliable damage. I've been having a pretty good experience with these guns. Like, they feel really good now, honestly. Now, Real Shatter still isn't fixed. They still need to do some more changes. But at least in the meantime, this is a nice little little step. And I'm not complaining. But here is another perfect example. This is an F-40 Sabre. This is a pretty maneuverable plane. And I'm able to just sit behind him. I keep switching between combat and landing flaps to do so. But, I mean, as long as you have some good flat management, this plane is pretty good in the dogfight. Especially if you can get a below like five minutes of gas, you're going to have a great time in this thing. I can't really think of many planes, like the Arietta course or the stuff like that are going to give you a hard time, but for the most part, most planes you see, you'll be able to just sit behind with no issue whatsoever. So this plane is sitting at a battle rating of 9.3, and for the most part, I've actually had a really good experience these past few weeks at 9.3. The matchmaker feels much more favorable than it used to be. But you are still going to be getting up tiers. And so if you do have to fight A-10s or SC-25s, your best bet is to actually hang on to your missiles. You know, just hang on to a couple A-9Bs. And if you're going head on with one of them, get one of those warmed up. What you can do is you can actually fire your A-9 at their A-9 or their R-60M. And whenever you do that, it'll go ahead and it'll flare the missile for you. That's your best chance of actually be able to survive. Because this plane cannot dodge an A9L on R60M. It's not like an area yet, which can pull, you know, 17 Gs and still make the energy get out of the way. If someone fires an A9L at you, you're going to die. Unless you are able to decoy it, or unless you're far enough away that you can drain enough energy. I would actually recommend climbing in this thing, especially if you're using the AIM-7s. But even if you're not, just getting above them and diving down is a really nice strategy. I recommend actually targeting the A-10s and the SC-25s first, just so you can get them out of the way. Because once they're out of the way, you can dogfight all the stuff that doesn't have the super cracked missiles and not get beamed by an A-9L and R-16M out of nowhere. And hopefully they won't be paying attention like that SC-25 was, so you can just beam them with a couple missiles and not have to worry about it. There is one use case I could see for the AIM-7, and that is against people running away from you, mean like an SC-25 or something like that, that aren't actually running chat. As you can see right here, this SC-25 is only a kilometer in front of me, and he's not running chaff. And so I'm able to just easily kill him from behind with an AIM-7. Now, if he was two kilometers in front of me, that thing would have reached. The missile has, like, actually pathetic thrust. But it does have a few uses. Overall, though, I'd say compared to literally any other missile, like the AIM-9B, you know, even the, uh, <laughs> even the WASD missiles that you can get on something like the Votor, I would argue are better and have more of a use case than this, but it is what it is. Overall, though, this plane is, I mean, I like, I like the F-38. It's not a very good spot in the matchmaker. I wouldn't say it's very good just because it's a flareless plane in 9.3, but it's enjoyable to fly sometimes. So another thing is that it is pretty good in ground RB. Uh, you get an absolutely absurd bomb, make the 3000 pound demolition bomb. And you can also bring some rockets along with, although I've had an absolutely terrible experience trying to kill stuff with these rockets. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I cannot aim these whatsoever. Like, I was trying to kill this, this Chris and Tiama, and uh, I just I, I have no chance at all of <laughs> being able to get them on target. So, personally, if it was me, I would just run the 3,000 pound bomb and run away, because I kept getting beamed by AA. Just like this guy that's firing a missile at me right here every time I actually tried to go in for rocket runs. But I do actually manage to dodge this because the thing can pull absurdly hard. But overall, though, it is kind of fun for Cass, but I would still just recommend playing the F-100. In any case, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll catch you all next time. So uh, peace, y'all. Have a good day.